Hi, it's Chris Vine here. Welcome back to the Little Railway. We've had a problem at the far end with some substance on an embankment over the winter, so I've got some tools and a train and I'm off down to the far end to sort it out. See you at the other end. So you may remember in a previous film where we built the turning loop, it was built on this embankment, but in fact we ran out of soil part way through, so there's a small gap left at the end. You can see where the grass hasn't grown over yet. And the net result of that is that that part of the embankment is a bit newer than the, the rest of it. So during the winter we've had a lot of rain and that has caused the newest part of the embankment to subside a little bit. Uh, you can see it quite clearly if I walk up here. You can see it quite clearly how the rail has uh, dropped. Uh, that particular fish plate you can see is well and truly down. So it's dropped, but it actually lent badly outwards. So um, you can see here, if you look at the bricks, the bricks are all leaning outwards and the earth has just subsided. But it's not surprising, it was uh, not very well compacted when it went down. Uh, however, when it was compacted, I think it would have sagged a bit anyway this winter with the amount of rain we've had. So uh, this is the first nice day in the spring. And so my plan is I'm going to lift the line of bricks up and put some earth underneath them and put a bit more on the outside. And then I can bring some more ballast down and uh, lift the rails and get it all nicely levelled. So really the first thing to do is to lift the line of bricks and put some uh, soil underneath those and lift them back up again. I'm just going to lift this line of bricks, all the ones that are wrong. Okay. So I've got some uh, soil with ballast stones in it that I dug out from one of, one of the points where I was doing that up last year. So I'm going to just put that in the trench and build it up a bit behind it. So I think what I'm going to do is first of all just try and set uh, a brick in the centre here at the height it needs to get to. So I'm going to go and sight along. You can see if that looks like right. Uh, maybe it's not high enough yet. So I'll put a sample a little bit higher give myself an idea as to what I'm trying to achieve here. Then I'll work to I'll work out from, from that one that I've got correct. Bringing the bricks towards the rail a bit also gives me a bit more soil on the outside to support them. So this is a slightly better line, I think, for the bricks. I hope you like the high-speed clouds going at different directions at different altitudes. So what we've got now is a line of bricks which is lifted to probably about the right height and I've pulled them in towards the track which means that uh, there's less ballast to build up and uh, they're sitting more on the top of the embankment rather than trying to fall off the edge. So the next thing I think is to try and lift the line and just try and get that lined up by eye and um, then the very last job will be to uh, put some soil on the outside of these bricks, build that up a bit so they don't slip away and then make the ballast nice uh, along uh, where the track bed is. So now I'm going to lift the line up, lift the track up, lift it through the ballast a bit. We'll need to bring some more ballast in in a bit. This is the bit that was so low. So if I, well, the other things I need to do is I need to set it over at the correct uh, super elevation angle. So I've got a little digital spirit level here. That's half a degree leaning out. That's completely wrong. First thing to do is to lift it like so. Ballast will drop under the sleepers. So it doesn't need lifting so much as uh, tipping. That's now two degrees banked in. Super elevation. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take that off so I get a look along the line and I'm going to see what that looks like. So that's looking really quite good now. It can go up a fraction more at this joint, because the joint will probably sink anyway. So if I just do kneel on this side and get a bit of a bit of ballast under here. The human tamping machine, not as good as a placer. However, let's have a little look along there again. Oh, that's pretty good now. OK.
So what I need now is to put some more ballast along the edge of the bricks here to support the track there. So I've got some on the train up here. I'll bring that down. Right, start from the beginning of the work. More soil being delivered. Not quite in the spectacular quantities we had by machine, but enough for this trip. Well, I suppose the obvious thing to do now is just to tap that soil in and compact it a tiny bit with an old brick. The next load of rain will fix it up like what I expect. Right, a bit more ballast and that's the job done, I think. I've got to get the track in pretty good shape this summer because uh, one of the videos is we're going to try to break the world's speed record for a steam locomotive on this railway. So we want the track in pretty good nick for that, uh, but that's not for today, luckily. Bricks raised, earth put in either side to keep them in place, and the track reballasted. So I'm down here on the embankment on a fairly tight curve, and I've got with me here uh, Book 3, The Forgotten Engine, and looking inside, we've got a, a, a little, one of the technical pages is about banking up the track uh, on the curves. So uh, that would be a spirit level showing the track being level, and here the track is canted over a bit, and the idea is uh, that when you're going around a tight curve, it helps the engine to go around the, around the corner, and so you can see I'm using a spirit level here to see how much the track is canted over and you can see down here this is the spirit level so when it's absolutely level the bubble will be between the two little lines and you can see there's quite a good uh, degree of uh, banking up as we go around here uh, and when I finish the whole uh, repair on the line we'll have a demonstration with the engine running around with the spirit level on the train and we'll see how much it changes as we go around the different curves so I've just lit the fire in Bongo for the very first time in 2024. Some charcoal burning and a little bit of smoke, so I'll shut the fire hole door. It's not making much heat yet, but we're getting there. I'll put some more coal on. So here we are filling the tender with water from the little water tower. That's the coal burning properly now. At about 40, 50 PSI. We're making progress. So we've got pressure up now. Uh, as you can see, the stations are listing. So now I'll just head off down the line to where I've been working on the embankment. So we're just going to go round the track very slowly, round the new turning loop. Uh, I don't know if you can see on the carriage there, there's a spirit level, and we're going to film that too. And the idea is to see how much the track is, track is banked over on the way round the curves and whether the, the banking over is nice and constant for the curves. If it's not, I have to come and do a little bit of adjustment to the track later on. So we're just going over the point as we come onto the turning loop now and the curve. And I've put the uh, spirit level up in the top right hand corner so you can see easily while we're going round. So here on the beginning of the curve you could see there's a good uh, bit of super elevation or banking up. And this is before we get to the bit that had failed. Definitely banked up here. And then it loses it a bit here. Um, I'll work on that later. Now we're coming to the bit that I fixed last week. A little bit less, yeah. I've got to do a bit more banking up here, really, haven't I? It's probably sagged a bit since I did it. Oh, it's not bad. There was one bit that was a bit poor, wasn't there? So we've had a complete steam round the line very slowly, and that should have shown, as we went round on the uh, curves, it should have shown the banking up quite clearly on the little spirit level. 
What we're going to do now is we're going to go a little bit faster around the coast because there's a funny thing. The spirit level doesn't really show whether it's at that angle or that angle. What it really shows, a little bit like a pendulum hanging down, it really shows uh, where the acceleration is. So normally, if it's still, it's the acceleration due to gravity, which is vertically downwards. So the spirit level shows what is level. But if we're going fast around a corner, then there's a component of acceleration sideways. So what that will do is, if we're going at the correct speed for the curve, the design speed, and of course I designed it with mathematics, um, if we go at the correct speed for the curve, then actually, although the track is at an angle, it will show the bubble back in the centre because the banking is at the correct angle for that speed. It's the same on a bicycle. When you're on a bicycle, you lean over, and of course, the, the angle you lean over at on a bicycle is the exactly correct angle for banking over for the, for the gravity and the, and the acceleration around the curve, because if it wasn't exactly the correct angle, you'd fall off one way or the other. Uh, we might try that experiment later as well. So this time we're going to go uh, rather fast around the curves and uh, notionally at the design speed and we should then see that whereas before it was showing you very slowly what the, what the uh, uh, banking angle was, it's going to now show us at a faster speed it'll probably be almost neutral. If we went even faster it'll be tipping the wrong way and then everyone will be feeling they're being thrown out of their seats. It's exactly the same on a full-size railway. The curves are banked up according to the, speed, the line speed that the train should be running at there. So here we are going at what I hope is about the correct speed for the banking. And you can see here on the curve, the spirit level staying pretty much in the middle, which it seems I've got it all about right. Then here it loses it a bit. It looks like I'm leaning outwards. And the bubble's running inwards. I've got to do some more work there. And then here, back on the better bits of the banking, it's pretty much staying in the center as we go around the different curves. So I've got that about right. Now, I mentioned doing an experiment with the spirit level on a bicycle, trying to demonstrate that uh, you have to have the exact correct angle of banking on a bike. And here I am trying exactly this. So the spirit level is taped to the crossbar, and I'm going straight, and the spirit level bubbles about in the middle. And then as we go around the corner, you can see very clearly I'm banking over, and the spirit level bubble staying pretty much in the middle. So this time we're going to try going a little bit faster than the correct speed for the curve. And this time, although you know that the curve is banked up inwards to the left on the main curve here, you should see the spirit level showing that it's actually going the, the other way. That's because we're going faster and the passengers in the train will feel as though they're being thrown outwards on the curve. Right, we give it a go. So now we're on the curve and you can see the bubble moving to the left. That means that the wagons appear to be tipping outwards. We know they're not, but that's because we're going too fast for the super elevation. So we'd be being thrown outwards. So thank you for watching this little film. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, maybe you'd like to subscribe to our channel or watch some of the other videos. Meanwhile, bye for now.